Campaign 2020 is sponsored by Wisconsin Hospital Association Quick Trip Wisconsin Counties Association Wisconsin Realtors Association and Wisconsin Operating Engineers Local 139 Sarah Rodriguez of Brookfield is a Democratic candidate in the 13th Assembly District. Sarah, welcome to Wisconsin Eye. Thank you very much for having me. I appreciate it. As I prepared for the interview, I went to some of your campaign social media, and I'm intrigued because you say you were not going to run for the Assembly until the April election. Please explain that. So, uh, yeah, thank you for the question. You're, you're right. I was not going to run for the Assembly um, until the April election, and I decided to run when the legislature really made people choose between their health and their right to vote. There were a lot of things we didn't know about this pandemic and asking people to vote in person, um, I just thought we needed better leadership and we needed somebody who had better healthcare expertise in the legislature. Well, you've been a healthcare professional all your, all your whole career, correct? Correct, yes. Mm -hmm. so, so here's my question, on September 28th, the governor must decide whether to let lapse or continue the uh, statewide mask edict. Your recommendation if the governor called you up and said, Sarah, what should I do? So, you know, I do think we should continue with the mask edict. You know, as a former epidemic intelligence service officer with the Centers for Disease Control, you know, I worked on national and international outbreak investigations. And I agree with Dr. Fauci. This is not the time to take our foot off the gas. You know, this is the time to become more vigilant so that we can continue to keep our community safe and that we can keep businesses open and operating. There's a uh, pandemic impact to the state budget, Sarah. If I'm making up a number, if we don't collect a billion dollars in taxes because of the economic slowdown due to COVID-19, and you're a legislator, uh, what are your thoughts on, on how to make up that shortfall? Should we raise taxes and fees or should we cut spending? So I'm not sure that those are the only two options that we have. You know, I think there are other ways that we could look up to shore up the budget while maintaining the critical needs and infrastructure for Wisconsin families and communities. We have a, a robust rainy day fund that we could tap into. We could expand Medicaid in Wisconsin that would bring hundreds of millions of dollars in revenue um, back home to Wisconsin. We could also close some loopholes so that large corporations are paying their fair share in Wisconsin and that we can contribute to the infrastructure that they use in Wisconsin. The, um, we've seen hospitals, Wisconsin, and nationally, of course, be on the front lines of uh, treating COVID-19 patients. If you're in the legisl legislature voting on the next budget, do you think hospitals deserve an even greater priority than they might have in the current one? So yes, I ha was a former executive within a local hospital a healthcare system here, and I have seen firsthand how critical hospital systems are to keeping our community safe and managing this pandemic. This is especially true for our critical access hospitals, not only in our urban areas, but they really provide a critical service for our rural communities. I would support increasing Medicaid reimbursement uh, for hospital systems and expanding, again, expanding Medicaid in Wisconsin, which will bring hundreds of millions of dollars home um, to Wisconsin in revenue. Senator Capping had just introduced a bill and it says if you're a business or an organization that follow COVID-19 protocols to protect patients, customers, or employees, you could not uh, be sued over COVID. Uh, do you support this bill? So I'm not quite sure what guidelines they're um, referring to because we have multiple guidelines from federal uh, organizations, from state health departments. And we have a system in this country where people can have their day in court. And I am confident that if it's a frivolous lawsuit that the judge will rightfully throw it out. Um, as someone who's worked with infectious diseases, give us your overview and uh, what do you think? Are we gonna see, is it gonna get much worse in Wisconsin before it gets better and uh, the potential for a vaccine? I'm just curious because of your career experience. Right, so um, as you mentioned, I'm a registered nurse and I um, am, have been a healthcare executive for, for decades and uh, I'm a public health expert. So I was an epidemic intelligence service officer with the Centers for Disease Control. Um, 
what happens as we move forward really depends on us and our community. And so we need to make sure that we are following the guidelines with community. We need to make sure that we are wearing masks. We need to make sure that we are following social distance guidelines. And those are the types of interventions that are gonna get us through this pandemic until we can get a, a vaccine or we, until we can reduce the viral transmission to a place where we can get back to normal. Um, as we move forward with the fall and the winter, I would just like to you know, talk to our communities and say, as we move more indoors, this is when it's gonna become the most important to keep your family and your community members safe. So wear those masks, keep social distancing, and you know, make sure that you're really um, taking care of your community. Okay, let's move on to other if issues. The question sure. in the Capitol, who should draw congressional and legislative district lines? Do you support the governor's People's Maps Commission? Because the constitution says the party in control should draw those lines. So I, you know, I do support the Governor's People's Maps Commission because it is a nonpartisan commission that will draw maps fairly in Wisconsin. There is strong support from Democrats and Republicans in our community for a nonpartisan commission to draw those maps. If we represent communities fairly, this will reduce the hyperpartisanship that communities really have literal tolerance for right now. The um... We've seen the debate over policing reforms play out nationally and even in, in Kenosha the mm -hmm. last few months. There's a, a Republican senator from Racine, a retired officer with eight bills. The governor has nine. The speaker's got a task force. What, if any, specific policing reforms do you think should be enacted in Wisconsin? So I absolutely support the governor's nine bill package of police reforms. These are reforms that have strong support not only from the community, but from law enforcement themselves. They include use of force standards, chokehold bans, uniform training standards. Um, you know, police officers have difficult jobs and these reforms would protect the public and law enforcement from high risk situations so that everyone can go home to their families safely. As the states around Wisconsin legalize medical and recreational marijuana, the dynamics change in Wisconsin. What's your position on, on, on that issue? So for me, you know, I follow the data and the science on the information and the data and the science on the information says that, you know, legalizing uh, recreational and medical marijuana does not um, increase bad effects for our communities. So I would be willing to look at any legislation that that um, is able to, you know, legalize um, both medical and um, recreational marijuana. Turning to property taxes, since Wisconsin is a high property tax state, the the limits and the caps on property tax levies that local governments have lived with for more than 20 years, do you think they should be continued? So I think local control is important in Wisconsin and many communities do not want to raise taxes. Uh, however, we need to give those communities uh, more tools to be able to raise revenue for critical infrastructure like schools. So you do support alternative sources of revenue to- Yes, to, alternative to, sources of revenue for local communities. I think it's important to give them more control over that. Would that include something like giving a local community the ability to levy a half cent sales tax on its own? Yes, that would be one of the tools that local communities could use to be able to get additional revenue for that critical infrastructure like schools. Paying for highways and bridges. The governor last year recommended raising the gas tax. 30.9 cents hasn't been raised in more than 10 years. Could you vote to raise the gas tax? So we stopped tying the gas tax to inflation a while ago, and it makes sense to me to tie that gas tax back to inflation and that the people who use our roads more should support the maintenance of those roads. Local governments and school boards, when they plan a major public works project, should they have to give a preference to uh, Wisconsin businesses? Um, yes, I mean, we do have a bidding system within Wisconsin, but I think tax dollars should stay in our community to be able to grow our local economy. We've talked about a few issues. Is there any other issue you started about public health, but any other issues important to your campaign that you want to highlight right now? You know, I think right now when I'm talking to constituents, um, the things that are most important to them are healthcare and how that healthcare is affecting many facets of their lives right now whether it's the pandemic management, whether it's their kids being back in school. I have two children of my own that are doing online school right now. 
I would love to see them back in school, and how the pandemic is affecting local businesses. These are the three areas that um, are most important to the constituents in Assembly District 13. And all of those things are really tied to the pandemic management. And I, and I think it's so important as we move forward to have a healthcare expert within the assembly so we can make some of these difficult, complicated decisions. And uh, finally, uh, you want to highlight differences between you and the Republican incumbent that you're challenging on November 3. Sure. Look, you know, healthcare is complicated, and we are in the middle of a pandemic. We need stronger healthcare expertise in our legislature to make decisions. You know, I am a registered nurse. I've been a healthcare executive for decades in health systems, private industry, and I currently own my own healthcare consulting business. I am an epidemiologist and I am a public health expert. I was an epidemic intelligence service officer for the Centers for Disease Control, did national and international outbreak investigations. I have the healthcare and private business experience to represent the 13th Assembly District well. Sarah Rodriguez of Brookfield is a Democratic candidate in the 13th Assembly District. The election is November 3. Sarah, thank you for talking to Wisconsin Eye. Thank you so much. I appreciate it. Take care. Thanks. Campaign 2020 is sponsored by Wisconsin Hospital Association, Quick Trip, Wisconsin Counties Association, Wisconsin Realtors Association, and Wisconsin Operating Engineers Local 139.